Hello. Very good. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate you uh, attending the city council meeting this evening. If you all wouldn't mind joining me in the standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our invocation this evening brought by Pastor Flanoy. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor. Eternal God and kind Savior, we thank you so much for your blessing you bestowed upon us. Now we ask that you shower down blessings tonight on our city council meeting, starting with our mayor and our city council members and their assistants. Remember our police department, our fire department, first responders, our military. Our blessings after we've left this place that we'll get home safe and find all that we left just as we left them. We ask your tender mercies and your compassion and your healing heart to touch the war-torn countries on this globe. We thank you for safety in this country and our veterans. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, first order of business this evening is the opportunity to have a proclamation. I'm very glad to have proclamations. If we could have the fire department come forward. Any other fire people? Yeah, you guys over here. All right. Ready, set. Um, like I said, it's an honor to uh, make a proclamation, uh, any of the proclamations, but this proclamation is for Fire Safety Month. And it reads, whereas fire safety is a paramount importance in the city of Bonner Springs, Kansas, and protecting the lives and property of our citizens is a top priority. And whereas fires can cause devastating harm to individuals, families, and our community, resulting in injury, loss of life, and extensive property damage. And whereas fire prevention and preparedness are essential components of ensuring the safety and well-being of our residents. And whereas education and awareness are key factors in reducing the risk of fires, promoting fire safety measures, and preventing fire-related tragedies. And whereas the month of October has been designated as Fire Safety Month to raise awareness about the importance of fire safety and to encourage proactive measures to prevent fires and protect our community. Now, therefore, I, Jeff Harrington, Mayor of the City of Bonner Springs, Kansas, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2023 as Fire Safety Month in Bonner Springs, Kansas, and urge all citizens to observe this month by educating themselves and their families about fire safety measures, including the installation and maintenance of smoke detectors and fire extinguishers, developing and practicing fire escape plans for their homes and workplaces, ensuring that all family members and employees are familiar with evacuation routes and meeting places, promoting fire safety awareness within our community and encouraging others to do the same. Let us all come together during October Fire Safety Month to make Bonner Springs a safer place for our residents and future generations. Congratulations. Okay. Chief? Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for uh, the proclamation. It's an important month for the fire department. Uh, I do want to, we had our uh, first open house uh, yesterday, uh, the first one since COVID shut it down, and uh, it was relatively light, but uh, we're hoping next year we'll get more and more folks out there. I would remind also, uh, November 5th is when we changed uh, our, uh, the time on our clocks, uh, maybe one last time. We don't know, I don't think that's official yet, but uh, when we do that, it's always a good reminder to change the batteries in your smoke detector as well. And uh, please follow the Bonner Springs Fire Department on Facebook as we're putting uh, fire prevention education materials out quite often, and that's a good way to keep up with what we're doing. And again, thank you, Mr. Could Mayor. Could you introduce all your- Well, I'll let them do it themselves. That'd be a lot quicker. <laughs> Which one am I? Yeah. Oh, I'm Will. Hey, Will, what are you, what are you yeah, at the fire department? Uh, just firefighter EMT. Very good. Okay. Jason, I'm a firefighter EMT and a driver. My name is Armand. I'm a firefighter EMT. 
My name is Eli. I'm a firefighter EMT. My name is Allie. I'm a firefighter EMT. Chris Jennings, Deputy Chief. James, I'm a firefighter paramedic. Thank you all. The first item of business, thank you very much, is to uh, ask for citizens' concerns about items not on tonight's agenda. Uh, there has been one change to the agenda. The first item that we'll be covering on the agenda is the update concerning our water meter issues. So if anyone would like to stand and address that, we're going to have a short report about that. Then all your uh, uh, questions and concerns can be uh, dealt with then, uh, if you'd like. Is there anyone that would like to stand and talk to the city council about items not on tonight's agenda? Uh, the fire, the meter, the water meter issue? We're, oh, okay, come right ahead on, I'm sorry. Name and address, please. Yes, sir. So thank you all for the opportunity to talk. So my name is uh, Paul Reese. I'm a United States Army Colonel, retired. I live at 132 Davis Avenue uh, here in Bonner Springs. And I like two topics just to talk real quick. One is very simple, uh, but I appreciate uh, the words tonight for the retire uh, for veterans. But I also like to think that maybe on the public record we could uh, pray for the Israelis who suffered uh, over the weekend. So potentially we could take that up as a city council. <clears throat> the second point I'd like to talk about is the rezoning of 300 130th uh, up here. I know that's not on the docket tonight, so I thought this was an opportunity to express my concern uh, about that decision that is going to be upcoming. Uh, so first of all, obviously, I'm against the, uh, the single uh, multifamily uh, rezoning proposition that's been out. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that have to be considered when you think about that. I know several of the residents, some here tonight, uh, some not here tonight, have wrote uh, letters to the council members, including the mayor, expressing their concerns. Uh, so I would ask very much that you all take that to heart, please. Uh, read those very carefully. Uh, I know you're going to be getting more here in the coming weeks, uh, as this will be taken up, I think, next council on the 23rd. Uh, but then even after that, as the building process goes on, if you were to approve that, and I think it's important that you consider some of the second and third order effects of what that may be, uh, not only from a city perspective, but from a resident uh, perspective and those that may be impacted by that. Uh, some of those things, such as the things that are outlined in the proposal uh, that went out uh, a couple of weeks ago. I mean, we don't even understand the traffic uh, patterns yet. I understand that's going to be taken up later on, too. Uh, but then also it was mentioned in the docket that we're not even sure what the impact on the local housing is going to be. Uh, so those are pretty significant issues uh, that need to be considered as we think about the second and third order impacts of a decision that would be set up for rezoning, not to mention uh, the impact on the police fire department that we just saw, public schools, uh, the potential fact that they've applied for low income housing uh, and the impact that that may have uh, on the area. Uh, so I think that's very important uh, that you look at that not only from a city perspective, uh, but then from a residential perspective, because we have a lot of the same concerns. Uh, and the impact that it'll have from a traffic crime side of the house, okay? Uh, also, uh, from the pup property value and safety of the children that live in our neighborhoods as we go through all that. Uh, so I know um, that the time is coming. I know we're not going to have an opportunity to talk about it until uh, when it does come on the docket, but I want to express my concern uh, and on behalf of a lot of the people that live in the same area. Uh, some of them, like I said, are here tonight and some of them express letters to you. So please. Think about that. I think there's other ways to handle this. I think there's other ways to get a benefit for the city rather than rezoning this as a multifamily. Uh, a lot of you have looked at different options before, and I encourage you to look at different things uh, to build the city up so it's not just 
exit 224, the last free stop until you get on the interstate. Uh, but the last thing you want to do is have a series of apartment complexes on your right, on your left, on your left, and your right as you come off the exit either. Uh, so please think about that as we look at how we build our city better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anyone else that would like to stand and address City Council? Please. Hello? Kind of intimidating here. Oh. Uh, because I know so many of you guys. So I'm Ron Johnson. I also live 132 uh, area, Davis Avenue. Um, I'm also against that rezoning. Um, and many, Paul made many of the reasons why, and I, and I did email all the council members um, about my concerns. Uh, one thing that I'm kind of, I'm not very in tune with city government. I just don't get involved. Uh, maybe I should. I'm kind of finding out maybe I should more. But I, I know you guys, I, I keep reading about this strategic plan. Um, and, and I understand that. I, I think the city does need a plan to progress. But I also know that I vote for individuals and not the plan. And I guess that's what I'm asking for is, you know, sometimes the plan and the individuals may not meet. And so, you know, I'm voting for the individual. Uh, what I, how, you know, I know them. And so I guess that's, that's my thing. Very good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Anyone else that would like to stand and address the city council about items not on tonight's agenda? Very fine. We'll move on to the uh, uh, consent agenda. The consent agenda this evening includes the minutes from the September 25th, 2023 city council meeting, claims for city operation, and waivers from generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP, for financial reporting. Um, I would, uh, anything to be pulled by the staff, citizens, uh, questions or concerns from the council? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. So moved by Mr. Reeves and seconded by Mr. Stevens. Vote please. McMahon? Yes. Wood? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Kip? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Reeves? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. And uh, if you would all allow me to uh, adjust our um, new business order and move to the first uh, item, uh, a report on our water meter update. everyone. Thanks for letting me jump on the agenda at the last minute. Uh, Frank A. Bart, Public Works Director. And uh, I wanted to just give you all an update as to where we are on this. I know I was here probably a month ago. Or uh, I'm going to go ahead and just cover some of this. I'm going to start with a clarification that this is, in fact, a public works project. And I am the public works director, so I do want you to know up front, I assume responsibility uh, for the, the issues and concerns and things that we're doing here. And uh, I want to go ahead and just give you a little bit of a summary and talk about what's changed since the last time I was here and let you know what we're doing. I know that all of you are getting some of the same or maybe all the same different calls and, and complaints and concerns that we are all getting at, uh, at our level as well. So um, as you know, this was a meter system upgrade. We're going to upgrade our water meters from the old mechanical style to this new ultrasonic, which is super accurate, super durable. Uh, in addition to that, we were going to do this endpoint where we could communicate uh, via the cell phone systems and things like that so that we had very good reporting and, and 
everything else with that. You can create summary reports and things like that. Uh, this project should have been completed by the end of 22. And uh, as you know, we ran into the end of 22 and suddenly everything went dark. We had, of course, a vendor that went bankrupt on us and uh, went out of business. So we spent probably January through at least May uh, regrouping, figuring out what else we can do in the next options. Uh, having done that, we found another vendor, we pursued them, and it was in May when that vendor selection was made. And we got really started in earnest in uh, the middle of July. There were some tasks that had to take place first. We had to make sure that one software is going to talk to the other software. Uh, before we installed hundreds of these things, we had to make sure that those would work. I think we did a test with about 50. Uh, then we installed a few more, and we were up to 80 at this point. Um, the last time that I was visiting with you, I was under the impression from the vendor that I was going to get this these meters. I was going to get about 400 in September, which never happened, and another 400 yet here in October, which I'm still waiting on. Uh, so, ultimately, the solution for reading these meters, plan A, is the technology, getting the endpoints, getting this done. However, as of October 1st, with the lack of the availability of those endpoints, they're in production, we're going to plan B, which essentially is assigning between four and six staff on a very regular basis. Uh, and what they're going is they're going to go out and they're taking a picture of each and every one of these water meter reads and serial numbers. From there, that picture then goes electronically to uh, one of two supervisors, and those two are going to work together to actually record off that picture onto a data sheet, which then goes down to finance, and it's entered into the system. We believe this is going to be as accurate as humanly possible, and uh, that is a big turnaround that's going to take place. Well, it's taking place right now. In fact, I met one of the people going down the hill, heading back to the shop. I assume it's getting too dark to read them tonight, so uh, they're out pretty late taking those pictures yet. So uh, anyway, under the circumstances, I believe that this is the best possible use or way to get these accurate reads and to get it done in October. Um, beyond that, I guess uh, I would emphasize there is, of course, an opportunity cost for that. If I have four to six people, which, you know, I don't have a huge staff anyway, but four to six people doing this, there's at least three different routes. Uh, so you're going to be doing at least three weeks, one per week out of every month. So when they're doing that, they're not going to be able to be out addressing the normal water breaks, sewer issues, things like that, at least not right away. Now, let's face it, if there's a 40-foot gusher someplace, we're going to have to drop what we're doing, and we're going to have to go address that before it drains the entire system. Uh, but a lot of these minor things that we do on a normal basis, those will get pushed back until such time as we get the technology and we get this technology installed, which I sure hope is this year yet. Uh, so having said that, I'm going to close with a statement again. This is a public works project. It has gone terribly awry for a terribly simple project, uh, but that stuff happens. And, I, you know, you get all the standard excuses for everything that we've been ordering and doing this year. Well, even for the last couple of years. Well, there's labor shortage, there's park shortage, there's supply chain issues. You know, same old story. But nonetheless, we're going to get this stuff and we're going to get it done. Uh, but the first order of business is getting the accurate reads and getting it, getting it done. So I'm done. <laughs> Some of the concerns that I've had um, uh, made 
mention of to me were the inaccurate readings from June, July, August that uh, when corrected resulted in a huge uh, disparity between what was billed and paid for and what they now also owe. Is that yes. going to be remedied with these new readings? Yes. Or? Oh, yeah. I know. I have absolutely the accurate readings each month. Previously, we were pretty much in a race to try to read these things in the allotted amount of time to meet the billing deadlines. And that's where we ran into a lot of problems, trying to do it with the same staff. We tried a whole different series of iterations. Um, we tried incorporating other people to assist at different points. Now, that ended up, we think, in higher error rates. Uh, so it's not like we haven't been trying different things. but <laughs> Well, I'm just trying to get yeah. a good grasp on it so we can help the sure. citizens have a, a better what understanding. What you're describing is essentially somebody was underbilled for two or three months and then smacked with a, an accurate reading that did the catch up. And in those instances, we can definitely prove how much water went through that meter. They're super accurate meters, and uh, the city recognizes this was an error and a mistake on our part for the lack of accuracy in the readings, and as a result, the city is working with these individuals to create a workable payback plan to go ahead and pay for that product. And that's what... Over several months. I've referred several to Tilly in the finance department to help with some type of, yeah. of uh, plan to help remedy that situation. So, in a, in a nutshell, that's it, yeah. So it's I just would be glad, the 80, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, it's just the 80 newly installed meters that you're reading manually? The 80 that are installed and have the endpoints already up and functioning, those are working okay. great. It's the other roughly 800 so it's that are in the ground that you have to read manually. So it's a new meter, but it doesn't have that endpoint communication exactly. system. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, not yet. But I'd be glad to answer any other questions. And I'm going to stick around till the end of this, too, in case you or anybody from the well, public wants. Um, now, there is a large number of meters still out there that have the old. Yes, uh, those are still being read uh, electronically, but, but you have to drive around right. and so read them. Right, having the inaccuracy reading that. I, I won't say it for 100%. It's just that that system is old and we do have to go back and do some rereads and things like that. But the, but the, the main issue is those that have been replaced, but the endpoint. We don't have a way to electronically, we can't tap the technology till we get those endpoints. Essentially the antenna. And Frank, you're very comfortable with this new company going forward. I mean, it's a new water plant coming on and having this dialed in and perfect. Well, that'd be great, yes. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, but, I mean, you're that's, that's where we're headed. Not going out of business like the last one <laughs> and that type of stuff. I, I sure was a month ago. <laughs> uh, but, you know, there's nothing I could really do at this point but wait for those endpoints. And I, I believe they're going the to do it. And I, cities use the same thing? And yes. In fact, okay, so. In fact, Leavenworth uh, Water District 8, I think it's called, they jumped in ahead of us, got them, got them up and going. <clears throat> they they love it. It's working. Uh, I did. My city manager asked me if I'd heard anything from them recently, and I shared with him a, a rather, I suppose you could say it's an email. I'm not necessarily proud of that I sent to them. <laughs> But it was pretty terse and direct about, you know, I, I really have an immediate need for this product. And don't be telling me it's going to be here once and then twice again because I share that information with city manager and city council. And we set this expectation and we plan our staff around installing those things. And so I got kind of angry in the email and I haven't heard from the guy since, but uh, I'm Going to have to contact him here probably tomorrow if, see if there's anything new, but I want it to be factual. If you don't know, don't say. <laughs> so the, the company that went out of business? Yes. 
Did they require a deposit? Did we lose any money by chance with that happening? And Did we? I'm we trying to remember. Are we are we're having to spend the same amount of money to these these meters, or is it about the same? No, it's about the same, but I think it's a little higher because we're buying the communication with it when we buy them. That wasn't necessarily the case with the other thing. No. We were buying that separately. So I'm thinking there's like a hundred dollars difference in units, but this includes the whole communications package. We don't have to pay for that separately. So you're not Plus we don't pay for them until we get them. Right. You're not aware of the loss of funds with the no, first the only, the only funds that we're still arguing about are over some meters actually, instead of the, it's not the end point. Forgive me if this has already been addressed, but was there any communication to the residents who are impacted by way of explanation, or are they just like sort of trickling in as they're discovering the discrepancies? I don't or? believe there's been any formal explanation. Is that something like a communication letter that can be sent out to those who are impacted, or is that asking a lot? Yeah. You can probably, um, I think either you or Tilly can address how they're being contacted now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, now. I mean, essentially, you know, as we send these things out, uh, essentially right now, those individuals are, when she, when billing does a, a setup for a billing, they can tell who's going to have ex, what we're going to call exceptionally high bills, higher than they normally are. We identify those individuals, and then a person from the Public Works Department is going to go out and talk to them or contact them and come out and visit with them if they want. Uh, but definitely give a contact with them to let them know this is coming and what's going on and what happened and, and, and try to answer any questions. Frank, I see some reactions behind you. Is that something that is just now being implemented? Yes. Yeah. In fact, I think it started Friday, maybe. Right. And to be clear, the first round of bills that's gone out with these large changes happened Product of the last week or so, two weeks, mm -hmm. um, and the intent is to try to uh, get in contact with each individual as we understand them to be a, you know a high flow or a high use. Um, but bearing in mind that this is not all the utility system either. This is roughly eight hundred of thirty four hundred. Yeah, it's about thirty one hundred over thirty one hundred meters. Yeah, there's only this roughly 800 that are impacted. And will all of them see it, uh, primarily those, uh, the readings that were done in June, July, and August were primarily low? And so there were Some of them, not all of them. Not all of them? Yeah. So of the 800, 400 are going to be shocked with high bills? We're looking at eight for this round. Uh, you got a number? I don't really have a number. I, th I think we're sending out um, the first route in October. Well, it's supposed to go out tomorrow. It's probably not going to with the way we're doing it now. And that's another complication with trying to advance notice some of these people is before the bills go out to keep the bills on schedule with people. People know when they're bill, they get their bill, when it's due, and so it's kind of um, trying to get a hold of them before those and test and look at their usage to see if, in fact, that is what happened with each of these accounts because we can't assume that it was mis misreadings that caused that. But I think um, this will be the last route where those summer month misreads will impact because going forward as we get new reads, then that impact basically has it's been already just, happened. Yeah, so our second and third route in um, September were already impacted, and then our first route in October 
will be. We're not seeing as much impact uh, with this route. Um, route. The route that was most impacted is a lot of people that irrigate. <laughs> so I think that's um, what a lot of that impact that we've seen recently is from. So I think after this billing this week, um, and we've, I think Frank's department is contacting those that were above the threshold, and I think there were just eight of them. Um, there's some more that we might reach out to that are not really high volume, but for them, it's high volume. Yeah. So um, there's about 15 or 16 of those that that we're going to probably look at tomorrow before those bills go out. But after this, um, I think we should be over that hump. So. Did the, uh, the mystery uh, start after the month where we would do the winter averaging for sewer rates? I didn't know if, if all of a sudden you're getting a low bill through those months that you use for the winter averaging, would they now be paying a lot lower for the sewer usage than the sewer? Some of them probably, because we, we started, started manually January. reading in January. So they may have a lower sewer bill or from April through next March, and then it may go up because the usage was lower than and for those we're just going to we're not going I mean, yeah we really don't have a <clears throat> method to look Very back wild. and see the usage by each month we know the usage that went through the meter but not for each month there's a few meters that we can tell each month um, some of our test meters had that feature where we had an end of the month read but that was only about 10 meters, so. Kelly, was mine on high end? Like mine was about three times the normal bill. Is that, is that falling within that range you're talking about? Of, uh, um, I didn't really, I, dollar-wise, yours wasn't. No, so there's a lot We've got higher. some like three ones. or three times higher. So, so we've got. There's, there's some that are, yeah. Thirty thousand gallons of water. Okay. Well, I have three daughters, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you for sending me all that information. Sure. Other questions? Question along this line: Have you seen what the disparity <clears throat> is many times between what the old meter was measuring and what the new meters are measuring because? The new meters are more accurate. Have you seen any, how much disparity we're seeing? There? I have not even had time to, to try to do that analysis. Uh, it, with this business of trying to just get the meters read. As, yeah, as far as the customers, you know, when we went, most of them were installed in August, and we didn't really see, you know, people calling in about high bills because of that switch. So. As much, we thought we might because of the older meters to the new, but I, I think there's only, what, 25% of the city is on these meters, so there's still a lot of residents Less. that oh, are... I'm sorry, you're right. A lot of residents that are on still on the older meters, so... Other questions, concerns? Seeing none. <clears throat> Uh, the best information I have is to refer these people that have a uh, huge bill and the, from the misreads uh, to Tilly for uh, information concerning a, a plan of some kind. Other than that, um, the, uh, also referring them to the Public Works Department, uh, Water Department to uh, get more information on the exact specifics for their individual service and what okay. to expect. I'm going to, again, I'm going to be here till the end of the meeting, and it sounded like there may be somebody back there who wants to visit about it. Very good. Uh, 
I think you pointed somebody out, but I... <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, I'll be around. Uh, this isn't an action item for us. We'll move along to uh, new business number one, uh, audit contract for 2023 and 2024 fiscal years. Staff. Good evening, Mayor and Council, Tilly LaPlante, Finance Director. Um, staff is recommending a two-year extension uh, for audit services for 2023 and 2024 for Gordon CPA. They currently or they performed our 2021 and 2022 audits. Um, their, their fee would be a 3% increase um, from 2022 to 2023 and then another 3% to 2024. If there is a single audit, the fee would be $3,600. And that's mainly if we get over $750,000 in uh, federal Dollars, so we didn't have to have a single audit for 2022, but we did for 2021 because of the ARPA funds. So. And may again have to do that. <coughs> yeah, we, depending on um, requirements with the unified government, we are to receive a certain amount of money that would exceed that threshold uh, through the county appropriation. Um, we're still working through that language on the contract. Just received that actually uh, last week, so um, that's very likely to be an expense we'll have to have for the uh, next year's audit or this year's audit next year. Issued by very good. Other questions? Or I'm sorry, I'd entertain a motion. I'm sorry. First, I forgot to ask anyone from any other comments from the staff, citizens. Concerning this issue, please. Not this issue, but several years ago, we had an opportunity to address the Mr. Johnson with the mayor. Yep, you'll be able to address us, or you can, uh, he'll, he'll be able to answer any questions. Well, I had my staff invite him to come and speak to us. Sure, we'll give you that opportunity. Anyone else about the audits? Seeing none, now I would entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve a two-year contract extension with Gordon CPA to perform audit services for the city for fiscal years 2023 and 2024 in the amount of $16,295 and $16,785 respectively. If a single audit is required, the fee will be $3,600 per made for program. I'll second. So moved by Mr. Stevens and seconded by Mrs. Gurley. Now questions, concerns, comments from the council. Starting down here, sir. Down here. And I'm assuming that you've been for the last couple of years, haven't we? Uh, just 21 and 2022, the principal um, of, the, of Gordon used to um, work for an audit firm that... We've been real happy with. Yeah, so. and yes, and they were the ones that helped us transition to the regulatory basis, and he's real good about throughout the year, if I have questions, I can reach out to him. Okay, thank you. Nothing. Nothing. It seems to me they've done a beautiful job. If, if they meet your, press, your requirements, I would imagine that's far above anything I could consider. So thank you very much. Uh, seeing no other questions or concerns, vote please. Reeves? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Yep. Yes. Early? Yes. Wood? Yes. McMahon? Yes. Long? Yes. Motion passes. Very good. And we're going to route through a, quite a few other uh, items right now that would probably be not near as exciting as the water. So if you'd like to come forward now, we'll go ahead and address that. Thank you, Mayor, City Council. I'm Dennis Dumovich. I'm, um, I reside at 13294 Richland Avenue. And we were affected um, certainly by the, the, uh, the water situation. And we had our meter put in in September of 22. Um, and we had a jump in the bill at that point, and they said, hey, you know, it was due to 
the prior meters probably not reading it correctly, and that's fine. And then we had a consistent bill for the uh, almost the next year, uh, 11 months, um, and then you know the September bill for uh, that we received in October was four times the amount. So typically it was about 140 some dollars a month. We got a 600 and some odd dollar bill. Um, and it was a shocker to us. We had no idea why it had happened. Um, so we went, made multiple calls uh, to City Hall, talked to a great employee, by the way, Heather. Um, I'm not sure what department she necessarily works for, but she is very, very, very helpful. So I do want to say that you know, she's a very good employee, and maybe BPU one day will seek her out and hire her. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, but nonetheless, uh, she was helpful, but, you know, we ended up being able to schedule a payment plan um, to, to pay that off over, th over three months. But I think there's a couple concerning issues. Number one was, and one of the council members had, had mentioned that earlier, that um, there was no prior communication. And there seemed to be a lack of knowledge as to why it happened initially. Then by the time we made it down to City Hall, um, I think they had maybe figured it out at that point. I'm not sure, but man, it sure would have been nice to have a communication, even if it was a general communication to those that had new meters that you may at some point receive a bill that's much larger than usual, and here's the process you need to follow so that it's not a surprise. Um, you know, we had a neighbor, our next door neighbor had a $1,300 bill. So ours was not nearly as bad as theirs, but it was a little concerning. Um, it, the, the, the other issue that I would say um, needs to be addressed, I think, is through your RFP process. When you go out for bid for um, something as large and costly as this, maybe we should ask for financials from these organizations and then make sure that we check references. Um, especially recent references, so that you can identify that there's some concerns that this company may be going bankrupt, right? Um, and we don't have to go through this whole process again. So, um, you know, those would be the only two suggestions that I would have um, in, in that regard. Give us some advance notice when you can. And, you know, even t today, if... if um, you think next month's bill is going to be big, call, call them, call the customer, send them a letter, hey, here's what we need to do. It would be very helpful. And then number two, work on the RFP process so that you can be aware of any future concerns. And then, again, accolades to Heather because she was uh, very helpful for us in this, this process. Those Thank you really very much, sir. Okay. Appreciate that. You bet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. no one else that has a concern uh, concerning the water seeing none we're going to go ahead and move on to item number two acceptance and final payment for the 2023 street resurfacing project staff good evening mayor council matt beats uh, deputy director of public works um our 2023 street program has come to a close and um, this year's contractor, McEnany Construction, finished it up about mid-September, and all we had 14 streets, I believe, that res resurfaced, and uh, we actually came in under budget. There's actually uh, money coming back to us. I don't get to say that very often. I don't get to say that very often. The uh, reason why for this was that some of the outer roads that we had measurements on actually were not quite as wide, so they were a little thinner. They used less product. When we went back through, did the calculations on what they had overlaid compared to what we had bid out, they actually came in under. This includes, uh, uh, we actually had four different areas where we did a full deck patch on there as well. So this actually, uh, we had money in that we didn't use that actually paid for that to be part of this in the, in the uh, contract. Hey, Matt? Yes. How is that, how is that discovered? Does, does McEnany tell you or do we have people on site that can? Actually, McEnany we did. They, they when, when they're running uh, their milling company, or not the milling, their asphalt overlay guys are out there. They're ordering it. They're measuring everything off and ordering it so they have the right amount of tonnage showing up that day. And they had, they, 
they literally said, like, yeah, we have, like, you know, five or six different roads that have come in under what we had budgeted. So, McEnany is a pretty good company. So. Anyways, uh, all said and done, we ended up being about four, a little over $42,000 to the good. Um, we're planning, we would like to take that, some of that money and use uh, about fifteen to $18,000 on some patches up on Metropolitan between 134th and 138th that are getting pretty bad. But then we'll do that through a, another local co contractor. I didn't want to run it through this one because it gets kind of messy. Um, anyways, um, so we're looking tonight for your uh, acceptance of the project and approval of final payment to them. Very good. Any other staff input? At Matt's point, there is some savings with the street program as, uh, as we normally do it, but um, uh, about half of that we're looking to, to go forward and um, do some full debt patching on Morris. Um, hopefully that would get done fairly quickly with uh, just this confirmation uh, tonight and um, get done. I think you actually can drive down Morris and start to see some of the areas that are, are excuse me, Metropolitan. I'm thinking about another one. Um, but Metropolitan where you can actually see some of the areas that have been marked out for, uh, for this project. So that, that's all I have. Very good. Any <coughs> questions or concerns from the citizens? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve the final payment to McEnany Construction for the 2023 street resurfacing project in the amount of $98,159.07 and accept the project with a final project cost of $847,400.70. Second. Yeah. Moved by Mrs. Gurley and seconded by Mr. Stevens. Questions, concerns, comments? And we'll start down here. Show that it was a short time period. Did they come in on, on schedule? I'm sorry. Were they on schedule as far as completion? It yeah, looked like it all took we figured about two about weeks. weeks. Yeah. I'm glad to see we uh, were able to save enough money to actually be able to do some of the full debt repairs as well. I was going to ask you about Metropolitan. So, do we have an actual time yet on when are you going to be coming back to us for approval of something for that? You know, that going up that hill. Right. Um, yeah, we've already contacted with them. Like I said, we're trying to stay between 15 and 18, so we shouldn't have to come back to you for it. Um, and we're more or less on their calendar right now, or their schedule right now for the next. Do we know about approximately when? Uh, to, sometime here towards the end of this month. Okay, great. Thank you. I was going to ask about Metropolitan, too, because I'm up and down there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Very good. Seeing nothing else, vote please. Please. Gurley? Yes. McMahon? Yes. Long? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Wood? Yes. Reeves? Yes. Kip? Yes. Motion passes. With this and the um, asphalt paving that we participated in out in the southern edge of the city, uh, how much did we spend on that? I think we're about yeah all together 1.1 million. That's this year. The, yeah. that's the number I was looking for. So this year we we did about a, a 1.1 million dollars worth of improvements to the roads in Bonner Springs. So and we was able to wheel that with some additional county work and not only realize the savings but increase the amount of uh, mileage done of repaving in Bonner and the surrounding community. So um, this has been an objective and a goal for the city for many years and something that uh, um, behooves us to continue to budget for and continue to uh, put that kind of investment into the infrastructure. Thank you. On to item number three, Axon Fleet 3 Purchase Agreement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Billy Knapp, Chief of Police. Uh, Back in 2020, the City Council approved us to enter a five-year contract with Axon for Fleet 2 in-car camera system. Um, since then, that camera system has been a tremendous asset to us for transparency and just for overall police operations. Uh, during our discussions with Axon in preparation of the 2024 budget, uh, they garnered us the opportunity to extend or renew a contract for another five years and 
receive some upgrades to the new Axon Fleet 3 system, which also includes a license plate reader in every car. Uh, we're requesting to do this now because there's some opportunities to save a significant amount of money for the city of Bonner Springs versus waiting to do it at the end of the year or coming next year after the budget. Uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Very good. Any other staff input? Citizens questions? Concerns? Comments? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to authorize the city manager to execute the Axon Fleet 3 and the Master Services Agreement. Second. So moved and seconded. Uh, questions, concerns, comments, and we'll start right here. Ma'am? I had no idea it was so common. I but this might be the wrong recording. <laughs> I had no idea the complexity of the in-car system. Yes, ma'am. I mean, when it goes on for this and just every little, yeah, yeah I just thought you put a camera up there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot more challenging than that, especially when we do everything electronically with the courts now, so yeah. sending, we get it straight from the camera to the computer, yeah. send it on to the courts. This looks like a saving, cumulative savings of about $35,000, is that? Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, the trade in and the yeah the trade in and uh, other deductions. Um, they say over the course of the whole five year agreement, we'll save about ninety six thousand dollars. Wow! And we do have currently a one license plate reader in one of our vehicles, correct? Correct. Will that be able to be utilized somewhere else? Will we sell that? No, we'll still continue to use that one. Um, it's kind of nice because the, the only downside to the fleet camera license plate reader is it sees what's in front of you. Okay. Where that camera can see cars going by at 60 miles an hour, the, oh, okay. the other one. So it's not quite so, the same system. Not quite, but pretty close. Okay, thank you. No question. I was going to ask you about that. And I don't know if I'll use the correct terminology, but uh, these in-car cameras, are they uh, passive or active? In other words, are they just recording it to be, you know, just be played and connected with the dash cam video, or will they actually be doing some real-time? Uh, checking of databases. It, it'll be doing some real-time checking of databases. So we'll be doing real-time checking of the items in the car. Yes. Thank you. Questions? No questions? No? Okay. Uh, my only question is, is there some way that, I mean, it's it's a very sm smart technology. Could it also read the water meters? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Exxon would do it if you paid them enough. I bet. And only thing to add is that this has been reviewed by the city attorney. I noticed the statement on the top, and he's approved it. Uh, we were... Very good. Seeing no other questions, concerns, comments, vote please. Roll play, Mayor. Okay. McMahon? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Kipp? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Reeves? Yes. Uh, Long? Yes. Woods? Yes. Motion passes. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> On to item number four, an ordinance to allow operation of all-terrain vehicle, micro-utility vehicle, low-speed vehicle, golf cart, or worksite utility vehicle. Sir? Mayor, City Council, City Manager, City Clerk. Um, Captain Mike Krause of the Police Department. Um, I'm here to discuss the making a recommendation for passing of an ordinance which would allow for the operation of the all-terrain vehicle, micro-utility truck, low-speed vehicle, golf cart, or worksite vehicle. I'll just say alternate vehicles for the rest of this so we don't have to keep going through all that. Um, the police department has received numerous requests by the public, and I know I've discussed it with a select few of you as into and had the conversations with you guys around different events and different times of the year. Um, there are... Uh, other communities along with Bonner Springs that has reviewed these and have passed them. Um, most of them in Johnson County, Leavenworth County as a whole. Um, the, the, the state has ordinances and the state statutes that are in place that prohibit the use of these uh, alternate style vehicles on the roadway with a caveat that if a city council or municipality or county government chooses to make an amendment to the ordinances that allow for the operation of those vehicles. Um, with all the conversations and all the questions of us of can we operate them or stopping people that are operating them on the roadway, 
dealing with those situations. Um, we reviewed our ordinances, wrote up a ordinance, which is what was attached here today, um, reviewed that with the city attorneys and determined the best set forward that if you guys were willing to accept the ordinance and pass it, this would be an ordinance that we could have in the city of Bonner Springs, which would allow for the operation of these vehicles. Um, these vehicles don't include dirt bikes. They don't include four wheelers, three wheelers, um, those type of recreational vehicles. It just includes the list of the alternate vehicles that I that we had mentioned that's in the title of this. Um, with that being said, um, all these vehicles would have to require insurance, which insurance companies provide different types of insurances depending on the type of vehicle, um, and they would have to follow all standard laws. You have to be a licensed driver. You have to, if you're driving at night, it has to be equipped with headlights and taillights. Um, if it doesn't have headlights and taillights, you can only drive it during daytime hours, and you have to use hand signals, arm signals, all those same things that are covered in the standard traffic ordinances apply to these vehicles. They have to stop at stop signs. You can get DUIs on them. You can't have your five-year-old kid driving down the street in, <coughs> excuse me, you can't have your five-year-old kid driving down the street in one of these um, and so forth. So, And then also within that ordinance, there is provisions that require you to operate it only on certain roadways that do not exceed the speed limit of 35 miles an hour. You can't cross over K7 because we all know a golf cart and K7 highway should never at any point <laughs> come in contact with each other. That is just not safe. Um, anything west, or sorry, anything east of K7 on Front Street, because that's where the road goes from 35 to 45 to 55. Um, and then it can't be driven on state highways, which that includes Kansas Highway, except for K32. We made an exemption for that because it is a low speed road. Because K, K, technically, K32 goes up, Comp, and then, or the business alternate. However, in those locations within our city, they're slow speed. It's a slow speed highway. It's not K7. It's not the eastern part of Caw Drive in Bonner Springs, but those types of road environments. So I think I covered most. That of was one of my questions. My, my, most of my points. Um, open to questions to answer for you guys, hopefully. Very good. If I have the answer, if not, I will be able to find it. Very good. Any other staff, citizens, questions or concerns? Please. Just curious, how do we distinguish um, as we, if we do, if this is approved, how would we distinguish between um, where people are allowed to go? How would we let our community know? Well, part of what we're going to, the police department's going to do, and it's the same approach that other departments do. One, to obviously publish notice of the vote here tonight, but also we're going to do a social media campaign that expresses the safety concerns, the legality of where and when how they operate in the road ways. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, no other questions, concerns? Yeah, Wasn't very good. That. Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to adopt the ordinance allowing the operation of all-terrain vehicle, multi-utility truck, low-speed vehicle, golf cart, and or worksite vehicle on some city street. I second the motion. So move um, and seconded. Questions, concerns, comments, and we'll start right here. I guess there's a, a swell of people that are wanting to utilize these vehicles. Yeah, I don't have a number for you because I've not discussed it with every single person, but right. over the last, I'd say since the last two years, we've had numerous uh, members of the public approach different officers and ask about it or when officers catch people driving these said vehicles on the roadway, they're like, when can they make be made legal? And as the uh, municipalities in Johnson County and after Leavenworth County passed theirs a couple years ago, um, I believe the city of Tonganoxie also has an ordinance which allows for it. Um, then we start getting asked, well, why can't we? Why can't we? And that's where we started doing the research of how they legally allowed their citizens to do it and then how we legally could allow ours to do it if it was something that was seen fit by the city government. Any else? Anything else? Okay. Oops. I just think it's going to change the city, and I have some concerns, but it's been laid out very well. 
So I have some actual examples. I know what a golf cart is. What's a low speed vehicle? So the low, when you look at the low speed, I, I had to look at these two and there's, there's at the, the very I, end I've of it. I've read through the description, yeah. but what, give me a picture. Like all, well, the all train vehicle refers to, you know, like the, the side by sides. Okay. Those are those kind of as expensive right. as cars are, those fancier Razor. looking Razor. things. Your micro utility trucks, your low speed vehicles, your work site vehicles, those are like, I like to, there's a lot more of them like in Asia, in those, those parts of okay. the countries. And then there's some construction crews and some, thing, some farm crews. They're like those smaller. Cushman's. Yeah, yeah, Cushman's one of the brands. Um, I think Dotson used to make some smaller okay. ones before they transitioned. I thought that was ultimately the case. Disappeared. That I... But it's like those smaller vehicles that d cannot exceed speed limits of more than 25s or 35s to begin with. They have smaller four-stroke motors in them. They, they're not high. Um, uh, that, sorry, high horsepower vehicles and okay. things like that. Thank you. But and you said it does not include three wheelers and four wheelers, but Correct. those are You're, they're actually technically all terrain vehicles, and they are three or more non highway tires. So how does that not meet this definition? Because we exempt that we we write those out of we the, specifically. The, yeah, there's. A, I actually did read this. I swear. Yeah, there's a one section there. Oh, I see right here. Section A2. Yeah, it says the provisions of ordinance shall not prohibit the operation of four-wheelers, three-wheelers, dirt bikes, or any non-street legal vehicles that don't fit the descriptions of these specific ones here. That seemed like a double negative to me. The, the way he said it. It is exempting right. it from being prohibited. That Hang on, I'll find it. It says the provision of this ordinance shall not pro... The provisions of the ordinance. So the ordinance itself does not prohibit the operation of those vehicles. The four-wheelers, three-wheelers. Yes. Dirt bikes or any other non-street legal. So vehicles. this does not prohibit that. They're already prohibited. <laughs> Semantics are it, fun. It's diff it was difficult for me to The provisions understand. shall not prohibit the operation. The provisions of this ordinance shall not prohibit the operation. Well, it says it should not prohibit the operation of the vehicle, but, but it doesn't say about talk about streets. It says you can you can operate it, you can own it, but it doesn't say anything about streets. Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, Hale re went through all of this, and so we might just want a little bit of clarification. Yeah, on I'll I'll talk to him on why that was written the way it was. I I would read section D for the same question, please. It says the it's same thing, though. Yeah. It says the same thing. Shall not prohibit cost. the operation. Yeah, so you can still use them. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it won't cross. prohibit the operation when crossing a street or highway. Okay, I see. Except Thank you. Yeah, it, Thank it's, you. It's, I got yeah, it's gotcha. not allowing those gotcha. vehicles to operate. Gotcha. The rest of the ordinance allows them to be, but it's not, a, it's not prohibiting these ones from being operated. You said legal's reviewed it? What's that? You said it's been reviewed by legal? Yes. The, then I'm not smart. I had this legal. written out a lot longer. Hale shrunk it down and made it supposedly more clear on from him. It was just and the semantics to me that made it difficult to say yeah, that I under this ordinance prohibits them not being exempt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions, concerns? Are, are um, you comfortable with how that's written or would you want it to be tabled just to ensure that it's clear before you communicate it out? That's you guys have to enforce it, so I just want to make sure you're comfortable with the language. No, I, I'm I'm good with the way it's written. It'll allow us to enforce it properly. Because there will be people that will test that. Um, yeah, and the four wheelers and the three wheelers. Um, that are not side by sides. That, I mean, the some of the side by sides that have a truck bed in the back of it are allowed. Correct. The, the razors that have two seats up front and two seats in back. Some of them have two seats behind that. 
uh, like you said, cost more, would be allowed, they'd have to follow the current speed limits because some of those can go 80, 90, 100 miles. Yes, miles. And, and those are all uh, those are all equipped with speedometers and things like lights. that in there. And if they're, not per, if they're not equipped with a speedometer, just like a vehicle, if the speedometer is not working, you have to be able to operate that vehicle within the guidelines of the law. So those don't have to be licensed? No. There is no state requirement for any form of licensing for these types of vehicles. Okay. Great. Um, or registered or anything. So that's cool. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. uh, I was just going to ask uh, also then from a different standpoint to, from the safety of the officers. You know, when you stop a vehicle, a licensed vehicle, you're able to get a little bit of feedback through your system, computer system, on who the occupants of a vehicle may be. Correct. With these, you have no idea. Is there a concern for the safety? Not, not necessarily. It's, it's the same thing with the vehicle. I can, I'll just use, use an example. You, I could be stopping a car that's registered to you, but you're not the driver of it. You could have had your car stolen overnight. You know, there's, there's a lot of stipulations that not necessarily the person in it. You're right. There is a little bit of information, but sometimes we're operating without any information at all or who it is. Um, there is that little bit of a slight, you don't know who's driving the vehicle that you're getting ready to stop, but it's something that officers are used to dealing with in other situations also. Okay, and it looks like you have attempted to ride everything in there to keep city streets from becoming a go a go kart racetrack. Correct, right? and that's and that's the whole the whole concept of it is they they have to follow the street the the laws of the street. They have to follow the ordinances. They have to follow the standard traffic laws. All those type of things. And those are. Um, that was one of the things when I was reviewing the other municipalities that had passed similar ordinances was to ensure that, that those type of events haven't occurred. It hasn't turned into just a free-for-all. I, I live on the other side of the river in Sha on the western side of Shawnee where predominantly there's a lot of go-karts and there's a lot of, or not go-karts, uh, for or the ATVs and there's a lot of golf, more golf carts I think than anything else. And they're predominantly used to get around the neighborhoods, go to those types of um, neighbors' houses and things like that. Some of them drive them over to Walmart, um, but they are driving on the road. They have, you know, it appears to be adult drivers. Um, the police, you know, when we're driving down the street and you appear to be a juvenile driving, you're going to get stopped. And they're going to ensure that that person's licensed driver. It's just like driving a car. If I see a 10 year old <laughs> driving down the street in a pickup truck, they're going to get stopped by the police and identified and ensure that they, you know, it might be a, a young kid that looks like he's 10. Bless, it, bless their hearts because, you know, we all eventually start to look our age, but, um, I mean, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so dirt bikes are, are basically not allowed on the street. There are p certain dirt bikes that are, but they have to be licensed by the state. There is a, there is a licensing requirement. They're, they're not dirt. There's different classes of dirt bikes, and there is a street legal type of dirt bike, but they have light those can be licensed by the state. But if they can't be licensed, then they're then they are licensed. exempt from this okay. ordinance. But there is a I I don't know enough about motorcycles to tell you there's a C, there's a CC requirement and some other basic requirements the state requires that the bike has prior to being allowed to be licensed by the state. Okay. Uh, other question is on the insurance I talked to some insurance companies they seem to feel like they don't know what kind of certificate they're going to be able to issue to somebody having a golf cart or something so that they can show that they are insured. How do you propose to handle that? That would be a conversation for the, the owner of the vehicle and the insurance agent. I, I do know that, I, I do know in the municipalities they all require insurance and they are being provided insurance cards when they're stopping these vehicles if they are violating the law. So how those insurance companies are doing it, it's, you know, each one of those vehicles has some form of unique identifier on them or how they're producing those insurance cards. I, I don't know. I don't work for an insurance company, so I'm not very familiar with how they're doing it. But there are major insurance companies that insure the side-by-sides or the, I call them side-by-sides, but that's the all-terrain vehicle. I know they can be insured, yeah. but the problem is having the insurance with them. I don't know how the insurance, what what insurance companies are well, providing you what stop, documents. I don't, 
I don't own any of those vehicles, so I don't know. Okay. So, but when you stop somebody, you're going to expect to see an insurance certificate of some kind, right? Some form of document, correct. Okay. Whether so, that's through an app, you know, most people do it through an app nowadays where it, it lists out your insured vehicles and your insured members. I'm, but I'm not sure what the insurance companies are providing for those. And that's great. So I'm saying now with your public awareness program on social media and so forth, you will express those kinds of things to make sure that yes, they we'll, have that on board with them. When we publish this, it's, it, it, it is state law that when you get stopped in your vehicle, whether no matter what the vehicle is, you have to provide proof of insurance. At that um, time. At the time of the stop. If you don't have insurance, you will be cited for it. If you don't have insurance at all, your vehicle can be ultimately towed um, if it, there's certain circumstances in place. So those are state-leveled requirements that are going to be maintained the same, and that's what this ordinance covers. I'm, I'm all for giving people, I mean, this looks like something that could be you know, very enjoyable, in good weather and so forth. Uh, I still have some reservations about it, but... I've talked to you guys. I'm feeling a little more comfortable with it. I understand. Thank you very much. Anybody else? We all know that this is going to make children want to, or ten-year-olds want to drive, and you. So you'll be you'll be emphasizing that it is the parents' it's, responsibility. It, you have got to be a licensed driver. Yeah. You you know, and we have to rely on parents to parent their children, and to make sure they're doing you know they're doing the right <coughs> thing. I'm, parent of four boys and it's almost the second full-time job <laughs> making sure my kids are doing what they're supposed to do um, but and we've, I think we've all using that exact that. example is there a citation issued to the parent or guardian if something were to happen there so with traffic ordinances they can be issued to the driver but there is also within the ordinance of allowing someone to operate your vehicle that you know is an unlicensed driver so even if you didn't have a license and or if I didn't have insurance I could cite you can cite the owner of the vehicle knowing that they allowed somebody else to drive it without insurance versus the person actually driving it. But you can also cite the person for knowing, if, like if I didn't know you had, a, if I knew you didn't have a license but I let you drive my car, you can ultimately be cited for that also. It's a little bit harder to prove on that. And then when there's also some child in need of care laws that can be put in place if you're allowing your child to be a delinquent or putting themselves into Jane danger. There's, there's actually some criminal stuff that could, depending on the severity of the incident, Right, one would assume that's not your goal, but yeah. oh, I just wondered if not. that was Ultimately, an we were in for uh, uh, education and enforcement right. of the laws, right. um, and we'd do it the easiest way possible to get that across, but that will be part of our, our push for educating the community on how to safely do this, and in most of the communities, these have been operating for the last couple of years, or I think in Leavenworth County, it's been longer. They've been doing it safely. They have long rides and stuff and all kinds of things. I know there's less traveled roadways, but they're operating safely. Um, earlier this summer, we had, uh, or I saw, several uh, pocket rockets, uh, little motorcycles that were yes, being driven almost as stunt vehicles. Uh, those weren't legal then, and I would imagine. They still wouldn't be legal. They're, again, those tiny little motorcycles. Now there are some manufacturers like Honda, and I think an Indian make a small. You know a little bit more about bikes than I do, but I think even India makes they make some smaller. It's like a cross between a moped and a motorcycle type of ride, where it's it's not the higher CCs, but it's still a smaller bike. If that those are also capable to be licensed by the state, and then they would be street legal. And then the electric bikes and electric uh, scooters and all that whole different thing That's those whole, can be on yeah. sidewalks and all that so that we don't have to concern ourselves with that and haven't had any problem um this um, pertains to uh, uh, uh parking as well all those yep they're if they're just park, be responsible for yeah they're going to park on the street they're going to have to you know park on the flow of traffic they have to be parked you know if you park downtown you go to say you want to go to third space or you want to go to Owlar junk or to kobe's or to any type of those other establishments they have to be parked in parking spots in the parking lots, or they have to be parallel parked appropriately on the roadway. They can't just be parked up on the, you know, there's a provision in here that says they can't be operated on the sidewalk, so you can't just 
pull your golf cart up on the sidewalk and park it there and go in. And, and those things have happened. Yeah. And, and uh, that's why I make mention. It also uh, seems to be one of the tendencies to operate on the wrong side of the street. Yes. Uh, just going down to your neighbors. And those are things that should be uh, as part of your education yep. program. And if our, you know, when our officers observe those violations, we'll address them as and Perfect. Um, I think this would uh, utilize in the police's UTVs as part of the education program might be a, another facet to benefit from those as well. Uh, I know those have come in very handy in providing police services and that <coughs> might be a, a good opportunity to make the, the uh, community aware of these opportunities. Other questions, concerns, comments? I was just going to say, I, I just saw the other day um, like a stretched golf cart over in the Woodsonia neighborhood and I had to do it second take it's like wow look at that you know and I don't know where they were going yeah it was you know three rows maybe four rows of seating on it right and uh, I, I was just processing all that and I think at the beginning there's always going to be some reservations and stuff I mean I, I remember I mean this started the genesis of having bike lanes right and everybody was all up in arms as well we got we got to make room for bicycles and stuff like that and I that's just the starting point of it all but just to just kind of lighten the mood a little bit, I, I see this because we have concerns about what's going to take place on Oak Street when the development goes starts and all that. I see this as a way of a remedy for parking. You know, a golf cart's a whole lot smaller than a big old Dodge Dually pickup truck or something, right? I mean, we can make space for it. In January. And 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 when. Uh, and I digress, but when Tiblo's roll around, you'll probably see a lot of golf carts and stuff like that. I'm okay. I've been looking to buy one anyway, and I don't live at Lake of the Forest, so this can be easy. There you go. Well, you won't be able to drive it from Lake of the Forest to downtown Bonner. No, but yeah. <laughs> we're going to get a golf cart lane on Caw Drive. There we go. That's right. See the bike lane to the golf Cut cart lane. Any roads. other? Any we'll other? Get Matt to pay them. Yeah. Um, there you go. All your, all your pavement savings, now you can make a new lane. I was fascinated Please. by the neatness of the micro-utility trucks. They're, they're just dear little things, aren't just they? Just a, a, a cute little truck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any other questions, concerns? Seeing none, vote please. Oh, yep. Can't hear you. Come up to the mic, please. Please, come on up. They can't hear you. If you don't, it won't be on the recording. Um, hi, this is in regards to the safety of the vehicles if they were to be on the highways. Um, would they require a slow-moving vehicle in them by any means? So uh, any road, they're not allowed on any road in Bonner over 35 miles an hour speed limit, and they're, they're specifically not allowed on K-7 or K32 east of K7. So as as far as those highways, this does not allow it. Okay. Um, but um, as far as requiring a slow-moving vehicle placard? Yeah, th this doesn't, we don't require that in this ordinance. Um, I know that I, I think Leavenworth County is the only one that does for operation on the out in the county areas where it's the dirt gravel roads and they deal with a little bit more of the higher speed environments, but us keeping them on the slower speeds, it wasn't something that we put into that ordinance, no. Okay, okay, yeah, because I was wondering, yeah, I was really curious about that, like if they were if they were to be on the road, they would require a slow moving vehicle in them. That, that was my curiosity, I guess. Yeah, if they, if they do travel at night, um, they have to have lights on them, operational lights. Yes. So. Okay, okay, well, And seat belts are not required. No. Most of them are now equipped with them. When you purchase uh, most golf carts now, if you're purchasing them, they can be equipped with them if you're so inclined to add that option. And I think, I could be wrong, but like most Polaris's and Sea Dew brands and all those, those ones are equipped because they, they can travel at extremely high speeds, higher than I thought. Well, a lot of those, that style has a roll cage that Correct. is uh, rated. Yeah. The golf cart is just a roof. Yeah, it's not that's really not a roll cage. Roll cage so. <laughs> Other questions, concerns, comment? 